To create a forward swept wing that could be flown at high speeds would mean overcoming this problem, known as structural divergence. As you take the airplane to faster and faster speeds, those wings are constantly trying to rip themselves off the airplane. In an aft swept wing airplane, as you put it under load at higher air speeds, uh, the wings actually bend leading edge down, which relieves the load, so they're self-relieving. When the wings sweep forward, they actually twist leading edge up, which increases the loads, which puts more load on, more bending, and so the wings are trying to constantly rip themselves off the airplane. This problem was inherited by retired Air Force Colonel Norris J. Crone. In 1976, Crone took control of a Department of Defense design project that would include the creation of a high-speed, forward-swept wing aircraft. The following year, Grumman began testing a radio-controlled model made of balsa wood. With this small prototype, Grumman would have a head start for the design that was to become the X-29. The prospect of a new generation aircraft, stunningly agile, fuel efficient, with low maintenance, created an air of excitement, even humor, at the 1984 unveiling. That's a beautiful model, but they got the wing on backwards. Grumman's chief test pilot, Charles Chuck Sewell, was chosen to fly the first mission that would take the aircraft to point four Mach at a maximum altitude of 15,000 feet. The X-29 performed flawlessly. In fact, during the flight, Sewell noticed something strange. The two chase planes were gyrating helplessly in the turbulence, while his flight remained relatively smooth. The elaborate flight control system, designed to compensate for the aircraft's inherent lack of structural stability, had actually dampened the turbulence. Computers provided the stability. Basically, the pilot doesn't have to do it. So he has the best of both worlds. He has what appears to him to be a stable airplane. In reality, the control services are moving constantly and rapidly to control and provide that stability that is not there from an aerodynamic standpoint. The long X-29 program has proven safe and productive. The forward swept wing configuration is certainly a shape for the future. December 1984, two small research and demonstration aircraft in California have opened up a new chapter in aviation. The Grumman X-29A is the world's first successful FSW, or forward swept wing aircraft. In 1942, German aerodynamicists speculated that an FSW would be more efficient than straight or swept back wing. So they built the Junkers 287 jet bomber to prove the theory but found that at high speed, okay. forward swept wings five, tend to break away. FSW concept was revived in the 1970s. By this time, technology had caught up to theory. The key is a carbon fiber composite material. Used correctly, it forms a super strong material that is stiff and light enough to create a superior aircraft. Time and cost were reduced by using parts of other aircraft, including an F5A and an F16, to make two prototype X-29A. The engine is a GE F404, also used by the F-A-18. Though small, the X-29 could revolutionize fighter design. Among other things, it is totally unstable. The pilot relies on triple flight control computers to keep the plane flying. Without the computers, the aircraft would be like a dart thrown with the feathers in the front and the point at the back. The pilot would be powerless to prevent violent sideways yaw or tumbling in the pitch axis. 
which would be catastrophic at high speed. To prevent this, onboard computers correct trajectory 40 times per second. The 29A proved that the advantages of the FSW were real. Grumman and NASA test pilots had been delighted with the results. The second X-29A began flying in 1989 with special equipment for even more challenging tests at angles of attack up to 40 degrees. If these go as planned, the maneuvers, pullouts, and slow-speed tests will explore behavior at up to 70 degrees. Air Force Advanced Technology Fighter. But we may see FSWs go into production early in the next century. Uh, in the years before Vietnam, uh, all the wisdom in the aviation world said that dogfighting was a thing of the past. Interceptors were the, were the new thing. Guns weren't necessary anymore because missiles were going to do everything. And the conflict in Southeast Asia, of course, taught us that uh, there's always going to be a place for dogs. Uh, some of the young kids today, uh, with their use of uh, video games, are very adept at working high hand, or excuse me, eye hand coordination. And that's very important in these airplanes because while you're looking outside, uh, observing, and trying to keep yourself oriented, you're making all the changes with your hands, just like in. Five levels crossing over to the left. 